Namaskar. In this video I will talk about concentration. Concentration is a philosopher's stone. Whatever it touches turns into gold. If you employ concentration in your mundane activities, in your work, in your projects, they become successful and fruitful. And also if you have concentration meditation, meditation becomes interesting, joyful, peaceful, beautiful. You don't want to stop, you just sit and you will say one minute more, one minute more, one minute more. But the development concentration, development of the concentration requires a certain attitudes. And some attitudes have to be rejected. That is that uh, in this video I want to talk about this. I will start with saying that we have one brain for all sorts of occasions in life. When you go to buy a loaf of bread in the shop, you use the same brain. When you go to do your job, you use the same brain. When you meditate, you use the same brain. So we carry different states of the mind and of, and of the brain from one activity to another. From the shop, from the supermarket, I carry that state of mind, that enlightenment, that, that special tuning of the mind and the brain to the, to the job, from the job to the family, from the family to the meditation. So everything affects everything else. So when you do meditation, and if you develop the concentration, if you develop the ability to concentrate, it will affect everything. There is no choice. It's very logical and very uh, clear understanding. So in meditation we will work with our concentration. But first let us fix the attitudes. When people start to do meditation, they have expectations. They start for some reason. Maybe my doctor has advised me. You have psoriasis, you have to do meditation to control it. Or you about to have a nervous breakdown, you have to do meditation. You are in a state of stress, do meditation. Then okay, I learn meditation. Then I have expectations. I will sit now in meditation and I will experience beautiful, profound peace. Or maybe I'm from a younger generation and I'm thinking this meditation process will open the doors into the beautiful world of mysticism and spirituality. I will see golden light, rainbows and Capricorns, and, you know, we'll see the astral world. So I have that expectation, I sit in my meditation, but nothing really happens. The same brain that I used to go to buy a loaf of bread in a shop is there in the meditation. The same habits, the same thoughts are going on in my mind. And I'm struggling with my thoughts. I'm not experiencing any peaceful state. Nothing like that. So I make two conclusions, either of them. One, this meditation technique does not work. I better find something else. It's just like you start to play piano and your your fingers are not accustomed to playing and you have no sense of proper musical hearing and you try and it becomes very clumsy so you think oh, maybe piano is not for me i better use the saxophone and i will succeed in that so you then you go to saxophone then you go to the guitar then you go to the flute and all everywhere is the same then you think or oh, maybe music is not for me other kind of people, they think that, oh, maybe this meditation technique is good and efficient and powerful, but I cannot do meditation. I'm just like that. I have no ability to do meditation. So both of those conclusions are wrong. Meditation technique that I'm teaching you is efficient, is very efficient. Very, 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 very efficient. So there is no doubt about that. And you will experience it. You will put your signature 
Yes, I tried and I succeeded and it is efficient. It helped me very much after some time. And that you are not able. Of course you are. Of course you are able. It's just like going to the gym. You go to the gym and you don't expect to be there standing, you know, with a gold medal from the first day. You're expecting to work, to labor, to exercise your muscles. And if you exercise your muscles, they will grow. The more you exercise, the more they will grow. At night when you sleep, the muscle will grow. In the morning you will come to the mirror, you will see the big muscle there. So, also in meditation, it's the same thing. But the exercise is on the mental level. You exercise the power of your mind. And that's a beautiful thing. To have a powerful muscle is one thing, but to have a powerful mind is really a big thing. It changes everything. So the mind cannot remain without thinking. It always thinks, always jumps from one object to another. So in that sense, thinking in meditation and thinking in day-to-day -day life almost identical. In day-to-day -day life, mind jumps. In meditation, it will also jump from one object to another. For example, sweetheart, can you go to the supermarket and buy some cucumbers? I would like to make some salad. Yes, my dear, I will go. Then you go to the supermarket. Okay, I will buy cucumbers. I also want to buy some bananas. Cucumbers, bananas. Jump already, change the object. Now bananas. Bananas come from, from where, where they grow. They come from Ecuador. There is a mark in there, Ecuador. Oh, in Ecuador, already jump another. In Ecuador, people speak Spanish as a part of Latin America. You know, in Los Angeles also there are so many Spanish speak speaking people. Oh, in Los Angeles, my very, very good friend is staying. And that friend of mine, he's a poet. Every day he writes poetry. He helped me, helped me to have an appreciation of the poetry. He introduced to me such great poets as Rabindranath Tagore, Rumi. So you see, where is the cucumbers and where is the Rumi? So many jumps are there. The mind jumps, cucumbers, bananas, the, the Ecuador, Spanish language, Los Angeles, my friend, poet, Rabindranath Tagore, Rumi. This is the line. Yogis call the mind a mad monkey that drank some wine and has, has been stung by the scorpions. Very restless. The mind is restless. But every thought that you think is not free. It's not free. It's the, you are charged for that. Every thought. And I, I describe the nice consequences, consequences of thoughts. They may be a nasty one also. And depending on the nature of the thought, you may burn little energy or you may burn a lot of energy. Like, for example, if you fear something, if you hate, if you worry, if you are in a state of anxiety, it burns a lot of energy. And sometimes you, you, you are not done any work, you have not done any work, but you are so tired by the end of the day, because you have been burning and burning and burning and burning on the mental level, on the physical level also. The brain is one of the most energy consuming organs in our body. It's like that. So the mad monkey is having a party at our expense. We have to pay for the whimsical behavior of that mind. It does not give you joy, does not give you happiness, does not give you peace, does not give you any efficiency. Just spends and spends and spends. So we have to tame that mad monkey. Now, in meditation, the thinking is similar. The only difference is that in that meditation, there is a center. Concentration. 
with center. Thinking with center. I may deviate, I may go somewhere, but still I am always coming back to the center. For example, I'm going to the supermarket. Cucumbers, bananas. I'm, I'm meditating, but I'm going to the supermarket. Huh? So when I'm meditating, I, I'm having an object of meditation. Mantra, repeating the mantra, taking the ideation of the mantra. But then, somehow I'm going to the, to the shop. Cucumbers, bananas, Ecuador, Spanish language, Los Angeles, my friend poet, Rabindranath Tagore, Rumi. <gasps> now, the awakening. <gasps> I understood. Oh, what am I doing? I am doing meditation actually. So why I'm there? And then when you walk up, you make an effort and bring the mind back to the object of meditation. So again you meditate, maybe for three seconds you're able to hold the concentration on real object of meditation, but then again you go somewhere. You go, 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 <gasps> and then you come back. So this movement of the mind resembles a flower of chamomile. It becomes like that. So what happens here? Here, two abilities of the mind are exercised. One is called awareness. It's the ability to be aware of what's going on. What am I thinking right now? If you're aware, if you know what you're doing, you are able to manage it. You are able to direct your mind. But if you don't know what is going on, if you don't pay attention to it, then you are at the mercy of the mad monkey. It's just like uh, there is a ship in the ocean. The ocean is stormy. And there is a man, you know, steering the wheel, directing the ship. And there are so many waves in the ocean. And that man with the, with the wheel, the driver, he is quite drunk. He's a good seaman, but he's drunk. So he knows where to go and how to go, but he's drunk. So time to time he falls asleep. And when he awakes again, he discovers that the ship is going somewhere else. Then he will make an effort, use the steering wheel and bring the ship again on the course. So in this way, many times he will sleep and wake up, sleep and wake up. And somehow his ship proceeds towards the goal. But many times there are some deviations. So the waves on the oceans, this is the tendencies of the mind, your habits, your thoughts, the objects that you are habitually connected with in day-to-day -day life. So the moment you lose awareness, the habits take over. The mind goes in the same course that it is accustomed to go. But since you're exercising that ability, since you have that resolve, that determination, I'm going to stay on the course. I'm going to be concentrated at the object of meditation. This ability of awareness will improve. And you will discover after one week of practice, the same thing will happen. Cucumbers, bananas, the Ecuador, Spanish language, Los Angeles, my poet friend. <gasps> you didn't go to the Rabindranath Tagore and Rumi, and now you come back. So the, the petals of the chamomile, they grow shorter. The longer you meditate, they grow shorter and shorter and shorter. After three months, cucumbers, bananas, <gasps> I'm meditating then come back. And this is something remarkable. I will explain the benefits a little later. So one thing is awareness. Through the power of awareness, you are able to achieve efficiency. Otherwise, you do many things, but you not getting things done. And this is very sad situation. Then another power which is exercised during meditation, is the willpower. Let's say, I'm meditating, but then thoughts come. My friend will have a birthday. I will make a nice cake. That cake, I will 
Uh, I will saturate with a delicious syrup and then I will wipe the cream, put it on top of the cake, then cut some pineapples, arrange some strawberries. <gasps> I'm meditating. Then you try to pull the back, pull the mind back to the source, to the, ori to the original idea of meditation. But the mind doesn't want. You say, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. I will arrange some more strawberries there. <laughs> and then you have to pull harder. So some thoughts liked by the mind. Mind likes to think those thoughts. They may be good, they may be bad also. But the mind wants to go, to stick with those thoughts. So to withdraw the mind from those thoughts, you have to exercise willpower. And that willpower will grow, just like a muscle. And this will also reflect on day-to-day -day life. I want to do something. No, no, I have a goal to accomplish. So your power of the will goes stronger and stronger and stronger. So some superficial temptations do not distract you, do not disturb you anymore. You become much more goal-oriented, much more tenacious. And this is just like a state of the brain, state of the mind, state of the nervous system. You even will not notice yourself that changes are going on. And then at one moment you will discover, oh, I have become a much more efficient person. So that is... Uh, that is the thing. Two things. Awareness, the power to know what I'm doing right now, and willpower, improving during this process. So we must be content and happy with this growing of the muscles, with this exercising of the muscles. Maybe I will sit and I am not able to achieve the complete stillness of the mind. But since I'm making an effort, the muscles are growing. And I'm happy for that. So if you have that attitude, no meditation will frustrate you. You sit on meditation and you close the eyes and the hell breaks loose. So many thoughts. It's just a chaos. And you, you might get frustrated like, what is this meditation? So much chaos. I'm not able to do meditation. Why should I bother? But uh, with other attitude, you will enjoy it. Okay, now I'm in a stormy sea and I'm really getting experience. The, the driver, where he will get better experience? At the peaceful sea or stormy sea? At the stormy sea, of course. You will get skill to navigate the mind. And you are enjoying that. And you are happy for that. So you should be satisfied, not with so-called result, the feeling in meditation, but with your sincerity, with your output, with your the work that you have done. This concentration of the mind has many striking benefits. One benefit already I told that uh, you become focused on the goal. And if you have done in the morning sincere meditation, the mind the whole day, it just reject um, unnecessary things, not very important things, and goes for the main goal. Another thing is interest. Everything becomes interesting. And I have observed it with my friends. We can laugh and we can talk about anything. Why? Because everything is so interesting. For example, you read a book some very entertaining book like a Harry Potter or something. But you have no concentration. You fall asleep. You don't enjoy it. Let's say you are reading some difficult, maybe not so interesting book like theoretical mechanics, the physics. But you have concentration. You understand each and every sentence, each and every equation. The mother will tell you, Hello, John, come and eat some. I made some cookies. Mom, wait, I want to solve a couple of more equations. It has become interesting because you are able to understand, you are able to grasp. And why are you able to grasp? Because you are able to hold the, the direction of your attention in one place. Through that, you get the understanding. 
That is another thing. Everything becomes interesting. You can never be bored if you are a concentrated person. You get joy, feeling of joy. When these petals of the uh, chamomile decrease, you just feel this inner spontaneous joy. You don't know why, but you feel joyful. Also peace. Because the mind is not running like that. Mind is staying at, that, at one place. And also when you are concentrated in meditation, you are piercing through. I will call it, it's just like a crust of, a crust of crudeness. The mind is just agitated. But below the surface, there is a peace and there is a beautiful spiritual existence. That's about the Capricorns. Maybe you will not see the Capricorns, but you will have that feeling, that mystical feeling of love and bliss, profound peace, profound meaning. Also intuition. When the mind becomes like a point, at that moment you are almost like connecting to the cosmic internet. And so many understanding, realizations, revelations occur to, the, to your mind. You say, oh, I understood this, 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 this. You will see that after half a year of meditation, you become a much wiser person. And you are surprised yourself, oh, how come I became so wise? Because of your intuition is uh, working your, its path to the surface of the mind. Before that, there is no choice. Too much movement, it's like, like a radio, you know? There are so many disturbances there, and you cannot catch the main wave, you cannot listen to the song. Similarly, intuition is always there. In our minds, we have a deeper knowledge, every one of us. Every one of us is so wise, actually. But so much clutter, so much noise, so much disturbances on the superficial layers of the mind. So when you clear those disturbances, intuition awakes. And there are many more benefits. Maybe 100 benefits are there, if I start to list them. But it is enough for now. I think this already, if we get that, is fantastic. So, your homework is to change your attitude. Don't expect in meditation anything. But expect that you will do your best. Every meditation approach with a positive mind. Whether the mind is peaceful, okay, good, nice, you, have, you will have nice feeling. Or mind is restless, then you will have nice labor, nice work, nice workout. And your muscles will grow. So have that absolutely positive attitude towards meditation. And when you see it, exercise the willpower, exercise the awareness power. I will bring my mind to the point. I will bring my mind to the standstill. This is your homework. And there are some additional videos uh, explaining the difference between meditation and relaxation and so on. You check them out on this level and then we will see on the next level. There I will explain how to, how to assume a posture, such a posture in meditation that will automatically improve in 50, uh, by 50% your concentration power. And that is also very, very important. We, in meditation, there, is, there are no unimportant things. Yogis experimented for thousands and thousands of years. And during those thousands of years, they have discovered many important things that we have to apply to win over in this battle with the mad monkey. And when the mind has become tamed, has become obedient to you, that life is just the flow of enjoyment. Everything is so fantastic. So thank you very much. I hope this gives you a new outlook. Namaskar. Meditate, concentrate, be aware. Stay with that so much awareness. And if you go out, then when you discover just gently bring the mind back and again with patiently and strongly also. Namaskar.